Hi, it's Liz Vickerman at Stampin' the Shoreline, and today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little Thinking of You card. Uh, it's a very quick and easy card that anybody can make, and uh, it's a great starting point for those who uh, are just learning to stamp. So what we're going to start with um, is one piece of 8.5 by 11 cardstock. Um, I've chosen Stampin' Up's Very Vanilla, which is a um, creamy base. And what we want to do is cut this um, actually right in half. You can get two cards. Uh, two card bases rather out of a um, eight and a half by eleven inch sheet. Um, you're going to need a paper trimmer or a uh, a ruler and a craft knife to score, but a paper trimmer does a great job. Um, I am going to cut this on the landscape side at five and a half inches. And here are my two pieces. Uh, this will form the base of my card, and then this piece I'm going to use to cut the layers of the card. Um, so your first layer, and again you want this on now on the eight and a half inch side, you want to cut at four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And what that's going to do is that's going to be your, your layer of your card, this back here. Um, and it's going to have a nice little set off from the base of the card. So you have your five and an eighth inch layer. Um, your next thing you want to do is cut a three and one sixteenth inch square. by an inch and a quarter. And the last thing you'll need for this card is a piece of, I've used crisp cantaloupe, which is one of our newer in colors, um, and this is a three and one sixteenth inch square. All right, to recap your pieces, and I will tell you that I put down a piece of contrasting paper, it's just scrap paper under here, so that you could see the pieces. I realized that you couldn't see the uh, very vanilla against the white very well. So to recap, what we have is our card base, uh, which measures five and a half inches by four and a quarter. And again, it's your half piece of paper, your eight and a half by five and a half, folded in half. So that's your base. And then we have your top layer, which is cut at four and uh, an eighth by five and three eighths. You have your piece of coordinating uh, crisp cantaloupe paper cut at three and one sixteenth square. You have a 3 inch by 3 inch square of uh, very vanilla, and you have a 3 and a 16th inch by uh, 1 and a quarter inch piece of very vanilla for your sentiment. So the first thing we're going to do is stamp um, the flower part, these beautiful uh, dimensional flowers, um, onto here. And we're going to use the, again, Stippled Blossom stamp set. It's a two part set, um, which just means that you stamp one image and then you stamp something directly on top of it. And from this set, I'm going to pull out the big flower and the bigger leaf. So you have four pieces. And the first thing we're going to do is stamp the uh, base flower, which you want to do in a lighter color. Um, I've chosen crisp cantaloupe and raspberry ripple. I think they look great together. So we're going to take the base and the crisp cantaloupe. Up our stamp and come in. And now um, you could stamp. You can stamp this any way you'd like. Um, I prefer when it's coming off the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my stamp down, but not completely onto the whole paper. It's not going to be centered. Um, as you can see from this around the edge, I've stamped off. And we're going to come in and put another one over here. And. stamp around. It doesn't always have to be the same way. So that's our base. And now I'm going to come in with the leaf, which is the bottom part of the leaf. And again, we're going to do that in a lighter color. And I'm going to use pear pizzazz for that. I'm gonna use that before. This is all a design thing. This is however you want to see this. And again, I'm not stamping the entire leaf image onto here. Just a little bit of green. And 
this one and I want to get as close to the flower as I possibly can without actually getting into it. Now you can use the stamp on the jig um, to line things up. But I like doing it by eye. So here is your base of the crisp cantaloupe and pear pizzazz. The next part will be to come in with raspberry ripple in the overlay stamp, which is this. Mm -hmm. Stamp directly on top of the crisp cantaloupe. And you can see already how much dimension that this overlay stamp is giving. It's such a pretty set. See already how much depth that has? Oh, it's just a gorgeous set. And then I come in with my leaf overlay. And wild wasabi. I'm trying to mm -hmm. that up a little bit. I'm pardon my phone, I'm getting text messages, but I'm not paying any attention to it. So that part of your card is all done. Get these out of the way, and now we want to ink up our sentiment stamp, which is from the Sassy Salutation set. And we're going to use the Thinking of You stamp. Base. And we're going to use Raspberry Ripple for the sentiment. And we're going to use our um, three and a sixteenth by one and a quarter inch piece. And you can measure the center, or you can eyeball it. Um, it's not too hard to eyeball. It. Stick that right in the middle. And there's our thinking of you. So let me clean all this stuff up, and I'll show you the next step. I'll be back in a minute. So now that you have all of your pieces cut and stamped. Uh, we're going to put everything aside but that layer piece that we cut at four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And we're going to use a scoring board. And what this is, I'm not sure if you can see in the video, it's just a series of grooves um, that allow you to make an embossed line. So we will stick this four and a quarter by five and three eighths piece up into the very corner with the short end, the four and a quarter end, up at the rail. And we're going to use a stylus. And what we'll do is at one eighth of an inch from each edge, we're just going to go down the scoreboard and press the stylus into the groove. And we'll do that at one eighth of an inch on every side. And I just go down it twice to make a nice impression. And as you can see, that that line now is embossed all the way around the corners of your card. And you could leave it like that, but we're going to take it one step further. We're going to put our diagonal plate into the scoring board, and it fits in there perfectly. And we're going to score this card now on the diagonal. So you want to put your raised edge down into the, uh, that you've already embossed. You want to put down onto your plate, facing down. And we're going to do a diagonal line every inch. So we'll start at zero. And then score on a diagonal every inch. And those corner edges, you might have to hold your paper down a little tighter. And then turn your paper. And again, start at zero, and we're going to go the opposite direction every inch. There are markings across the top of the scoreboard and down the side, too, to help you out, which is nice. 
again on the diagonal opposite way at every inch marking. And there's your quilted pattern. Uh, it's really pretty. And the next thing we're going to do is come back with the straight edge. And we're going to take that uh, sentiment piece of paper that we stamped thinking of you on and we're going to put it up into the corner with the short end at the top and again one eighth of an inch just down the top and the bottom side which is actually the left and the right this way but you'll see what I mean so we have a embossed line going across the top and the bottom and then just for good measure what I like to do is to make that edge stand out a little more on here I want to go back at an eighth of an inch and score it again so that stands out a little more so we can put our card together now you will take your base and you know words to the wise <laughs> and I've done this many times is make sure that the orientation is correct I've, I can't tell you how many times I've I've placed my artwork down on a card and found that it opens the other way so just take that little extra time so now on the um, piece that you've quilted with the embossing, with the uh, scoreboard, we're going to run some adhesive down each side. You don't need a ton of adhesive, uh, just enough to make it stick. And what you're going to do is give it a nice firm push once you've uh, adhered it to your card, and that'll burnish it in. So um, this piece is cut um, an eighth of an inch smaller than the uh, card base, so that we have a sixteenth of an inch border all the way around and come back in just lightly with your bone folder and adhere that nice and tight. And then your next step will be to take your 3 and 1 16th inch piece of crisp cantaloupe paper and your stamped flower design. You're going to put a little adhesive on the back of that flowers <clears throat> and adhere that to the uh, crisp cantaloupe cardstock. Now I've cut the square that we stamped is three inches and the crisp cantaloupe piece is three and a sixteenth. So it's really just a thirty-second of an inch border around the outside. Um, and it just adds just a just a nice border around the outside. Now if I let's do that again on the back of now the crisp cantaloupe, run some adhesive. And um, you can now stick this to the card base that has the first layer on it, right in the middle. You can use a uh, a ruler if you want to be precise, but I can kind of eyeball it. I'm okay with that. And you're going to push that down so everything is stuck to your card nicely. And your last um, step is to put some adhesive on the back of that sentiment that you stamped and then embossed and stick that right in the middle of the square. And give that a little push. So there's your card. So your finished card took about 10 minutes start to finish. Um, it's a lovely card, has great dimension with that two-part stamp set um, and the beautiful design of the quilting on the bottom. Your recipient will love it and they'll think, gee, they were so thoughtful. And you know, in this day and age of email and instant messaging and text messaging, I really don't think that we take as much time as we should. And you know what, a greeting card is a great way to say I'm thinking of you and you know what, I took a few extra minutes. So if you'd like any more information on making this card or any other card, please visit my website at lizvickerman.stampinup.net. And I hope to have another video tutorial for you again soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.